to be more efficient to use an industrial grinder of some sort though? Yes, uh, I had already used this tool to make certain that it was planed properly. Good. Now we're Good. doing just the detail work. So what material is that brush or whatever I'm getting made out of? It doesn't score the head. It's a steel wire. It's just fine. You don't leave it lingering on any one particular spot for very long. Otherwise, it can remove material. It's not going to remove it. It actually shines it up. <laughs> Whereas an abrasive will do it. But since we're talking thousandths of an inch, on the flatness of this thing, I prefer removing it with the wire wheel. If you have any carbon that's built up here on the faces of the valve, that can create hot spots and can damage the valve eventually. So the idea is to get that shit off of there. The functionality though, which would be much better of course, is to take the valves out, reface them, reface the valve seat and put it back in, but that's beyond what we're doing here. This is a light solvent to help clear off some of the oil that's been left on here. I don't like spraying solvent directly onto the piece unless I'm going to immerse it. Otherwise, just spray it on the towel. A lot of guys use brake cleaner. I guess that could be okay on aluminum pieces. It evaporates rather quick. I myself have this lighter cleaning solvent. It's basically dry cleaning solvent. It seems as though that the head is clean now and ready for installation. We'll do the same thing to the other head, and uh, hopefully they'll seal, they should. The idea is to pre-charge, pre-load, whatever, the uh, lifters. So what we do then is we got them completely immersed in the oil, and then you'll take one of your push rods and actuate the lifter, just pressing down on it with steady pressure, and once that you feel it go down, then release it, and it will have oil go into its oil hole. What we're doing is pre-lubing the inside of the lifter, so they're not gonna be noisy as hell when we start it up, because it takes a little while for the lifter to get oil in it. Although you have pre-lube on the outside to install it, that's not enough. I've already got one set of lifters in place. I won't say installed because the tray's not bolted down yet. But we're close. The plunger side obviously will go inward. Yep. And there's a flat surface on the inside of this tray hole that allows for proper orientation of these lifters so they can't turn in their bores and ride on the cam incorrectly. So we made sure that everything was lubed and this back one is kind of a pain in the ass to get to. Wiggle it to and fro and she'll go down into position. You can put your 10 millimeter bolts in here to hold these in place and we'll be good to go with the head gasket. So we've got both head gaskets in place ready for the heads to install. So onward and upward as they always say. And it is. The engine is at top dead center and what that does for us is uh, uh, puts us in a position where we're ready to check geometry after we get the push rods and the rockers installed. There's no yeah, there's no markings on this engine to let us know where top dead center is. So we have to do it before we put the heads on. 
So thanks Obama, since the f***ing engine was designed, they had markings on it to make certain that the piston could be orientated to top dead center. Because that's how the f***ing thing works, is opposites. It has to be in a perfect timing and all this shit. And they always had the mark on there. But now, GM in their infinite wisdom says you don't need it. You know, just stick something in the uh, spark plug hole, right? Well, a screwdriver. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just stick a screwdriver in it. You're talking about the orientation of these spark plug holes are at an angle. Yes. Therefore, it makes it impossible to tell when stuff's... Almost impossible. Almost. You'll get it ballpark, but it's still f***ed. By the way, we don't put screwdrivers down there. That's a horrible idea. No. We use a straw or these wooden dowels. Anyhow, we've addressed that beforehand in the point of the install where it's easiest to do, so we don't have to do it later. Alright, so we have the heads installed now and the bolts torqued to spec. We have the push rods now installed, so we're going to be putting on these very cool yellow Terra roller rockers. Its geometry is fairly simple. What we're after is when this is properly installed, it will ride the push rods in their cups and these little rollers are gonna be riding on the bell. What we're gonna do is mark it. You can use dry erase markers, Sharpie. They have bluing, that's the correct stuff, but this works too. So what we're gonna do after wiping off the valve stem, so we're going to put the Sharpie mark on the valve itself, valve stem. Once that we get yep. this on there, we'll rotate the motor engine and make sure that that mark is where it's supposed to be on the valve. And, and by mark, you mean the part where the roller on the rocker will remove the Sharpie from the valve stem. And then that, that creates a, essentially a line there. And that's the only point where the rocker is making contact and you want it to be dead center. If it's placed too high on the valve stem or too low. Then adjustment has to be made either by yep. shimming or milling these points of where the fulcrum will be on the Or rocker. you can change the length of the push rod. That too. So there is many aspects that we can consider when... Yes. So let's put this on and the instructions say to install them without any shimming and the idea is just to make sure everything's lined up and put oil on the threads. So now, tighten these to the spec, which is 25 foot-pounds. Then we're going to rotate the engine and see what our mark is going to be. It's the moment of truth. <laughs> yes. So we've uh, rotated the engine one full revolution, which has actuated both of these rockers. With the cylinder at top dead center, we're inspecting the mark of the roller to the valve stem and we're hoping to see that the mark is in the middle of the valve stem look no at that. way that is look at that it's almost center you know almost that's perfect. riding right i had three and six on that one and this one is the same way i i'm happy with it i am it's not something that i'm like oh i don't know i don't know no this i'm happy with Out, we did not need the spacer for the valve cover gasket. That is correct. We had read in the forums that they were running these rockers without those spacers and not having any issue. We verified it. By installing the valve cover and then uh, rotating the engine over a couple of times and there was indeed no striking of the valve cover. So now that we got those valve covers installed, pretty much all that's left is reinstalling the intake headers, harness. wiring harness, and then buttoning everything up. Right. We'll just uh, get to thrashing on all that. It's going to take time, but uh, we'll give you a nice little time lapse so you can enjoy our hours of labor in about 30 seconds. <laughs> So 
So this is the final piece, yeah? Yes, finally, after a bunch of bullshit, we finally got it ready for a test fire. Now we've already done the oil change and replaced most of the coolant in here. We'll replace the rest of the coolant after we verify that there is no leakage in the system. We tried pumping up the uh, lifters with oil, but likely they didn't get pumped completely. So there will be noise with those lifters. We're hoping that the noise will quiet down after a little while and um, the engine will smooth out and so on. So we'll see. Far, so good. So you recheck the code after we plug that back in? Yes, and it is eliminated. So, there's just a little connector behind this evap canister. This connector right here connects to the evap canister. Which is this piece right here, and now it's disconnected, popping up an error code. So, one little thing in this. But, the error code point is where we need to go, and look. We're located, popped it right on, and 30 seconds fixed. So where are you going? Just down to the turnaround and back. And so this, is the, this is the danger ride. The danger ride. And of uh, course, Wheels is insistent on coming with to make it that much more stressful. Yeah, well, we got a backup driver. We'll be fine. Ugh. is a successful initial run so far. Okay, no leaks, the fans came on as they should. cover on. The cherry on top? Says yes, wheels. the cherry on top. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not on it. Yeah, ask him. He knows this truck. Of course. How do you feel about that run? Uh, good. I didn't hear anything out of the ordinary. I think there's a slight exhaust leak on the passenger side. Other than that, that's it. Which is much improved it's, from what it sounded like yesterday. Well, yeah, I mean, and you can barely hear it until you hit a certain RPM and you can start to hear the uh, exhaust. Well, you're supposed track. to get this in for exhaust work next week, so maybe he could uh, fiddle with it at that point in time. Yeah. For now, it's manageable, so. Oh, man, you gotta get in. Yep. 
I got to I got to get the cherry going on. Pop that cherry. There it is. All right, let's uh let's get the hell out of here.